Hey guys, I am here to talk yoga poses today. Um, Ashley Reeder had some questions about foot pain and so I'd like to address how to use your feet and your hands in your yoga poses so that you can diminish any potential pain. Now, again, I'm, I'm not a podiatrist, so if you have increased pain that's not relieving itself um, and you are really practicing your yoga poses correctly, then I would go see, you know, I'd go see a doctor. But beyond that, what I teach is to have good posture, good form in yoga. You want to basically think of your foot like a tripod. So the heel and the sides of your foot are going to be where you're going to put more of your pressure with the ball of your foot being there for slight pressure, for balance, basically. So if I'm standing in a good mountain pose, I'm going to have my booty tucked in, I'm going to have my hip flexors forward, I'm going to close in my rib cage, I'm going to roll my shoulders back, and I'm going to be able to wiggle my toes because I'm not on the front of my foot like that, or I'm not turned in like that, or I'm not sideways like that. I have good posture with my feet. So notice how my feet are pretty much directly under my hips as well. So that's pretty much what you want to have in terms of a standing pose. And that way, too, if I were to go back into a chair pose, now I'm coming back on my heels a little bit more, just like you would for a squat pose. You know, if you're squatting, good squatting technique, we always say would be able to wiggle your toes if, if you're doing a good squatting technique. So now I'm going to show you a warrior pose. The warrior pose, and I'll turn my yoga mat here just a little bit so you can see the side here. Good warrior pose with your feet, you're going to have... Your front foot, again, just like we talked about, is going to be on the mat, and you're going to have your, you're going to be able to wiggle your toes. Now your back foot is turned sideways, and if you took a measuring stick and measured from the front of my heel to my instep on the back foot, you would have a straight line. You also have 90-90 curves. So you've got a 90 degree curve from my ankle to my knee, and to my thigh, you've also got a 90 degree curve here, so that when I come up into my warrior one pose, now what I'm doing is, again, I can wiggle my toes on my front foot, I can wiggle my toes on my back foot, but again, I'm on the side of my foot more than on the front. I'm using the ball of my foot for some of that pressure, but for the most part, my foot is taking the pressure on the far side of my foot. And that way, I can really sink deeply into that warrior one, or open up into warrior two, or even go to bound warrior, or I can go to, I'm sorry, reverse warrior or bound warrior, and I still have that good foot placement. Switching to crescent move, where both of my feet are on parallel lines with each other, if I think about leverage, I'm gonna have more stability if I bring my leg out than I am if I bring my leg in but this is really the proper posture. Now notice how I've engaged my glute here and my heel is pressing back towards the mat. My front leg, I'm pressing down into my thigh. And again, I can wiggle my toes on my back foot and I come up into full crescent pose. Now I'm balanced and I'm able to really extend that stretch out and I'm not putting excessive pressure on the wrong areas of my foot. Um, I could go into more specifics with like, you know, how your foot's put together, but really you want to be able to use that outside of your foot when you're in warrior and then the back of your foot when you're in other stances. So you can see how from the side, if I go into chair pose here, I'm back on my heels, I can wiggle my toes. That way I'm not putting excessive pressure on weaker parts of my foot. Now let's go to a move that has your hands sharing in the pressure point. Now here in downward dog, notice how my feet, I can actually pedal and bring my heels back down towards the mat, but I'm up on the balls of my foot. That way if I come up into a downward dog split, for example, then I can be up on the ball of my foot, but I'm also sharing the pressure with my hands. That way I'm able to move in the ways that I need to in order to keep my feet from being in pain, basically. So I hope that was
was helpful. And um, if you have any more questions, by all means, let me know and I will see what I can do to help. Thanks and I'll see you guys later.